All right, y'all ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. It's live. We are in a building. We are getting ready to have a dynamic show with the return of our brothers from the future world of Israel. Looking forward to speaking with our brothers about a variety of topics, which include what is your nationality? Are we free? Are we gods? And we're going to ask, how do we solve the problems that we're dealing with tonight? We got a whole lot more than that. And we're going to give it to you tonight. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus. Jay is live right now. Strap on your thinking cap. Socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half Steppin' with Marcus J. Sellers has Jordan. Jordan with two seconds to go. Puts it up. It's good at the buzzer. Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. Manning lobs it. Burris alone. Touchdown. Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! He hits one deep to right center! That ball is out of here! The Yankees win the pennant! If they lie in, then they must be half stepping. Ain't no ass stabbing. Marcus J is live. Be down with us at 804-402-2893. Be part of the flagship show. Heard live from the den of Legacy Internet Radio. Thanking everybody for rocking with us. Y'all rock with us. We roll with y'all. Thanking those folks that are checking us out right now on the live stream on Facebook. Uh, we're thanking those folks that are checking us out right now on Legacy Internet Radio. Streaming live there as well as on TuneIn, on Streamer. And thanking those folks that are checking out the replays right now on YouTube as well as on iTunes. Y'all rocking with us. We rolling with y'all. We appreciate everybody uh, for participating. We got some folks that's checking in already with us. Of course, our brother, Mr. 3375, is not in studio with us, at least not yet. Uh, hopefully, he'll join us later on. But if not, we know he's part of the show. He's checking us out. So what's up with you, uh, Mr. 3375? My brother Kenyon in Jersey City is checking us out right now. And our sister Katrina right here in RVA is checking us out right now. So shout out to you guys. You see, if you're checking us out on Facebook Live, you can see we got a full studio and a full crew that we're going to build with here tonight. Uh, but before we do that, I want to make sure that I get all of the particulars introduced. You hear this brother join us every single Wednesday night, Wednesday night on Legacy Internet Radio. He is the host of the Urban Serengeti. Our brother, Reverend Darnell Carruthers, is here with us tonight. What's up, bro? Nothing much, man. Blessings. Blessings. Good to see you, man. You doing all right? Likewise. Yes, sir. All right, man. I look forward to building with you tonight. Of course, you hear this brother join us on the third Monday every single month right here on the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. Ain't no half-stepping with yours truly. My big bro and yours. Big bro Joe is up in this joint. What's up, man? Good evening. How you doing, man? I'm tired. Dog tired or regular tired? Man, I've been on the plantation all day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Real I, talk. Yeah, and you didn't even untie the bow tie. No, the bow tie has to stay tied this evening. What's that all about? <laughs> it matches the coat the socks, <laughs> man. Get out of yeah, here. Man, where your terms at, man? You get your I'm Yankees. wearing them. They're hard you bottoms. You got to get you a Yankees fit or something. <laughs> <laughs> My brother. And you know, has that with Marcus J. 804 Nine three. The phone lines are open, as we mentioned at the top of the show. We have our special guest returning to the airwaves of Legacy Internet Radio for their third time. They are the brothers from the future world, a uh, future world of Israel. Our Israelite brothers are in the studio. Introducing first our brother Ozias. What's up, brother? What's going on? Shalom, everybody. Good to see you, man. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Appreciate uh, having us back here, trying to get this uh, discussion going within the community. You know, get our people. To uh, wake up, have some understanding about the times and, you know, biblically, as well as the uh, things that's going around, on around us. Right. Um, for those out there on the airways, we're Future World of Israel. Uh, Elder Barak Shar, he's based out uh, NYC, New York. 
We got schools all over the world at this point. Um, we're pushing the truth to our people. It's being very, 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 very effective in what we're doing right now. Since the last time, you know, we came on, there's some huge things that's going on. Maybe at the end of the show, we'll discuss some of the things that, you know, we've been, you know, building upon or whatnot. But uh, once again, my name is Brother Ozias. We got some new people here. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, yes, uh, I'm um, Brother Raphael. Um, basically, uh, me and uh, Ozias, we team up on a, a program called Man vs. Bible on YouTube. And basically what we do, we just teach mostly about the scriptures. That's basically it. Um, we're just basically trying to build, you know, build throughout the world, not just here in uh, Virginia, but, you know, based on um, biblical prophecies and so forth, you know. So just want to just let people know that's who we are. That's what we represent, the Christ. I got you. I appreciate it, brother. Mm -hmm rejoining us we had this brother with us the previous two times brother just introduce yourself peace out there this is, um brother to good to see you brother uh the other brothers we know we have several more in the room and as we have an opportunity to build uh if you haven't had an opportunity to introduce yourself just yet uh as the mic comes around please introduce yourself at that time if you don't mind uh, brother Ozias, i want to go ahead and get started um the first thing that uh, I had when we talked about the topics in tonight's agenda, uh, one of the first things I noticed was where do we get our information from? And that was definitely something that struck me because uh, I am someone that's very annoyed right now with the interpretation of the information that's been disseminated. So why don't you tell us why you told me specifically that's something that you brothers want to talk about? Right, because a lot of times... Uh a lot of people think that us, and I'm speaking as Israelites or whatnot, how we're reading the Bible is just exclusively based right there. Our base, no doubt, is the Bible. We match everything up with the Bible. So what you're going to hear tonight is a little bit of history, that which, which is within the Bible, proves it, right? You're going to hear some things that happen for us, even location, which no man can deny because some of these locations still exist today. The thirdly, you're going to hear about artifacts. Some of these artifacts are visible today right in plain sight, but our people are overlooking them because of ideologies and different things like that. But my brothers that's on the panel, they're going to be able to shed some light. We are here also with the brother Shaul, UKOI. See, you uh, may mention that we had a great event, uh, positive, down there in Newport News area. I mean, just phenomenal, waking people up to, to the truth. So he's here. He's up here in Richmond. Uh, it's some things that we were, you know, discussing even further to bring this truth out all the way in Virginia and throughout the, the world, of course. Brother, you want to share? Uh, shalom. Uh, Brother Shaul from the United Kingdom of Israel congregation. Uh, we're based and located out of Newport News, Virginia, and we pretty much are centralized throughout the seven cities of Hampton Roads. Uh, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to the Most High and my Savior, the Christ. And it's a pleasure to be here today. I uh, thank the brother Ozias and the brother from Future World of Israel for building with uh, myself and my congregation in a spirit of truth and unity. And I also want to thank you, brother, for uh, allowing the brothers to be on your show once again. All praises. Absolutely. Hey, they're home. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they're home. So all they have to do is let me know they want to come or you guys want to come. And we find a date, we make it happen. So let's, let's get into it. Um, where do we get our information from? Let's talk about it. Well, the first thing um, that we want to bring out, of course, we read the Bible. So let me get real quick. We're going to just pull a couple of scriptures here. Give me Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. Just real quick. We're going to just prove a point just in regards to the Bible. And uh, I'm sure everybody else want to jump in on some of their, the points that they have. But uh, Revelations 1 and verse 3. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. So the Bible says, blessed is he that readeth. Meaning in favor of the Lord. You will be in the favor of the Lord if you read. Read what? Books about uh, pygmies? Books about butterflies? No, the Bible. So the very... First point we want to point out to people is that you have to be able to read the Bible. Now, to read the Bible, there's a certain way you have to read, right? The Bible is read precept upon precept. But before you go there, give me Isaiah chapter uh, 34 and verse 16. 
Because even though we, we're reading the Bible, we understand that this is the chief authority of our information, period. So anything outside of it we may grab, it has to match up with the Bible. So read that real quick. This is Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Uh-huh. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. See, once again, confirmation on you. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That's the point. Our people really, the reading skills that our people have, if you look at the numbers, a subpar. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. We got a caller, caller. What's your name? Where you calling from? What you want to get in on? Shalom, shalom. This is Levi. Peace, Levi. What's going on? Shalom. What's going on? I'm in for the debate. Yes, I'm just shalom. tuning in. Okay. Did you have a comment about something that you've heard or something that you want to share at this point? Oh, no. Actually, no. I'm, I'm, I'm tuning in to tune in because I, I, I'm at right now. I don't got internet, so I'm just tuning in through the phone. Okay. Okay. Well, we, we take uh, call-ins for, th- for folks who have comments and such. So if you have a comment, I'd be happy to take it. Otherwise, we will have to clear the line for folks who may have comments so we wouldn't have you listening to the show through the phone line. Oh, so you can't listen through the phone? Not through the, not through the phone line, but what you can do, if you have a smartphone, what you can do is you can download the TuneIn application. If you download the TuneIn application and search Legacy Internet Radio, you'll hear the live stream. Or if you're on Facebook... Nice. If you go to the Legacy Internet Radio page on Facebook, it'll actually right. give you a link that'll take you right there. And I know you mentioned you may not have access to the Internet, but unfortunately, that's, that's how you get to listen to the show live. Okay, no problem. I appreciate it. Thank you, Levi. Thanks for checking in, though, brother. All right, take care. All right, peace. Ain't no half seven with Marcus, Jay, brother. Brother, as I ask, if you don't mind, can I share something? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm glad the brother called in because uh, one of the things that that's really imperative concerning reading, you know, and, and you all know, because this is what you do, you know, you're scholars of the word. Um, when you read, then you're, you're processing language, and language is transmitted into something that we act on. Either we respond to it or we move on it somehow, right? Now, the brother that called in, he said, I called in about the debate language, and so there's somewhere within our community, there's a disconnect that you all are trying to connect, which is a beautiful thing especially uh, using Christ as a cornerstone. But he heard of a room full of brothers together, and the first thing he processed was debate. Debate, Whereas when I was outside prior to coming in the studio, I said, let me get a picture of this because this does happen. This is real. So I'm glad he called just to underscore that point. No, absolutely. Just the way you connected all of that is is something that I find is important because I, I should have asked him, and I didn't, I should have asked him how he knew about this debate. Because he mentioned that he didn't have access to the internet, but he knew that the brothers from the Future Boil of Israel are here today. So I'd be curious, and I should have asked him, and that's my bad that I didn't. Uh, but, you know, just because it's a, a bunch of brothers together doesn't mean there has to be a debate. There, there will be, of course. <laughs> there will be a debate, of course, before the end of the night. And um, I actually have a question, Ozias, um, and I've asked before, and I'll ask again. I guess one of the things that I've always kind of had a little bit of confusion with is when we're making one point how we would go from one point in the Bible to another point in the Bible to make points that seem to progress from A to B. For example, we went, I believe, from Revelations to Isaiah. Explain to someone who may not get it, yours truly, why point two isn't in the same area. Go to Isaiah chapter 28. Yeah, start at verse 9. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Uh-huh. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So this is giving us an example of how we should read the Bible. Keep reading. For precept must be upon precept. So the Bible is precept upon precept, right? So you have to first understand, hey, wait a minute. There's a pattern to how you read the Bible. The Bible will give its own definition. The precepts of the Bible will shine over just regularly reading the Bible, which is nothing wrong with that. But to get the understanding, the Bible is going to give its own definitions. Read on. 
precept upon precept, uh-huh. line upon line, read on, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So as scholars of the Bible, students, disciples of Christ, we are commanded to follow this book as it is written, right? So we know that the, to understand the Bible, we have to read it precept upon precept. You may find a piece of, of uh, our story in the Bible in one area, and then you'll have uh, uh, another example illustrated in another area, which will give you a better understanding of what's going on. What did you guys say, T? Give me Colossians 1 and 26. Yeah. I'm going to give you an example of a precept. Yep. Colossians 1 26. You want Colossians? Colossians, yeah, 126. For those folks still listening, 804-402-2893, 804-402-2893. For those folks checking us out on Facebook Live, uh, feel free to enter your questions or your comments in the same right. area where you're checking us out. Uh, if there's something that you hear you have questions about or you just want to comment, uh, debate, or whatever, uh, whatever have you, 804 804- Four zero two two eight nine three is the number to dial to be a part of the discussion tonight on the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. Yeah, Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Like this, I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a direct example of a precept. Give me Colossians one verse twenty six. Colossians chapter one verse twenty six. Mm-hmm. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints. So the Bible just specifically speaks of made, the mysteries made manifest to the saints. So the question is, who are the saints? Because the Catholic Church will tell you to get sainthood, you must die. Right. You see how they say they declare Pope such and such sainthood? In the church, the pastor get up and say, greeting saints, you got a mixed multitude. So to understand who the saints are, you pull a precept mm-hmm. to get the explanation out of the Bible who will explain clearly who the saints is. Psalms, verse one, chapter 148, verse 14. Watch this, and this is a precept for saints, for it's no confusion. The book of Psalms, chapter 148, and verse 14. Mm-hmm. He also exalted the horn of his people. Come on. The praise of all his saints. All his who? All his saints. And they are who? His saints. Go ahead. Even of the children of Israel. Who are the saints? The children of Israel. Even means indeed. So clear in the Bible, the saints are the Israelites. You don't have to be confused about it. So that's a precept right. explaining who the saints are. You get it, Marcus? I got you. And, and also, I got you. I just one more, one more point. Sure. The book of Psalms 119, 105, because it's letting you know that through the precepts, 104, and, yeah. 104 I'm sorry, yeah, 119, 104, just, just to bring that point out, because you know, we want to show do what precepts do. Okay. They gain, give you understanding. The reason why we read the Bible the way we read it, okay. they gain the understanding. The right. book of Psalms 119, 104. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and 104. Uh-huh. Through thy precepts I get understanding. See, that's what David says. Through thy precepts I gain understanding. Like you just had an understanding of the saints, just to give you the understanding, the definition of, and read on. Therefore, I hate every false way. David right. say he hates every false way. So we find something that's false that's going in whatever doctrine that people are bringing out. We can go pull a precept to prove a point. And that's all I want to bring. Out. Come on, Rev. One of the things that uh, <clears throat> that came in that came into my spirit when I was listening was again uh, what Brother Osias was talking about concerning uh, a reading and, and being informed. Um, one example I would raise right now is King James's version of the Bible. And that's exactly what that is. That's his opinion, right? Um, and so as we are reading for context and, and uh, the contour lines that I found that will give us, you know, a, a greater insight to the text, we have to consider where it was written, uh, to whom it was written, why it was written, and what was the author trying to get across to that particular uh, group of people. For example, when the Bible says, if any man be in Christ... Uh, he's a new creation, right? Does that exclude women? For example, if you're looking at a doctrine that is more so patriarchal for the purpose of subjugating even that gender, women, making them second-class citizens, uh, in, in that respect, you have to look at who or how are we defining God as a creator and entity? Is God 
uh, he and she is God, he only, because often we say our father beyond Christ, and even Christ himself said, Father, why has thou forsaken me? But that was also written by someone who had that misogynistic, perhaps even perspective concerning women. And so when we're reading and we're really trying to get to this question of even what a precept is, we have to take the time to do the literary criticism, see who wrote this, why they wrote this, what was their agenda, and what was they trying to get across, like when people read your information. We're learning now because you're very clear and deliberate about who you are and what you stand for, and that's how we learn. So that's, I'm glad you brought that out because that's a, what you said, brother, is a classic example. We have, we've heard that, your, your style of statement, We've heard that before. And this is why we, that question, Marcus, was put high up on the list. Because where do you get your information from? I made the comment. When, when, right off the gate, we do not just blindly read the Bible. We have basically did history on it, vernacular. All these languages, like a lot of people have a misconception of the Bible. When, when you start, and I'm not saying you, I'm just speaking rhetorical right now. But I'm starting to, in my mind, I'm looking at it, I'm formulating it. It's parakeeted words that comes out over and over again without no validity. So when people look at the Bible and they start parakeeting words without validity, we're now trained to say, well, where's your proof? Like we're not going to, there's no longer the, hear me out, there's no longer the ideology of saying, what, well, you have to prove the Bible. No, you have to prove why you think that way. You understand? So at this point, this is why I said we are no longer just saying we just closed our eyes and read the Bible. We did all the research. And for that reason, we brung all the scholars. So we have a book. My brother Shaul, he got, the, he got it at the book right there. I want him to read that excerpt for you because we can't prepare for this. Well, I'm glad you did, <laughs> because, you know, before you before you do that, mm -hmm. the question that I asked the last two times you guys were here and, you know, we obviously got answers. But, you know, we've got different Bibles floating around the room, you know, and the brother mentioned the King James Version. You know, there's different versions of the Bible with different, uh, shall we say, different words in different pieces and, and, and such. I'll I be honest with you. I'm not one that's as versed in the Bible as y'all. I wouldn't begin to debate verse and text and that sort of thing. But my question is, how are we coming from different Bibles or different versions of the Bible if we're to keep in line with the same ideology? So you have a funny dynamics at play with, with, with these type of things. See, as time progresses, people can write anything they want. I think that's what uh, Listen, was alluding can, to. People, no, but I'm saying people can write anything they want. There's a consequence behind them writing this. The original writing, the original text of the Bible, what we're, what we're showing people is that the 1611 King James Bible is the original text of the Bible. We'll challenge anybody on that. But well, I want him to bring this out real quick and read that real quick, just on the, in the Bible Dictionary. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 86, uh -huh. under King James Version. I like his articulation. <laughs> that's, that's why y'all see me tripping. Because this dude like, is like so Dre. I like it. Go ahead, brother. It's all cinematic, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need you to cut a promo for Legacy in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give me a call, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. You know, they, 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 they always told me I had a radio voice. Yes, so. sir, you do. All, All praises. Yes, sir. I'm not picking. I'm just having All fun. All right. I'm having fun. Okay, on the King James Version, and I think what the brother Ozias was trying to convey is we have to understand something. Uh, first and foremost is that a lot of people tend to think that King James was an author of mm. that version when he authorized it. Mm. Complete total difference. Okay, it says that when Elizabeth died in 1603, the crown passed to James I, who had been the king of Scotland for 37 years uh -huh. as James VI. Several months after he ascended the throne of England, he authorized. He what? He authorized. Authorized. A new translation of the Bible to replace the bishop's Bible. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day were divided into six groups three for the old testament two for the new 
and one for the Apocrypha. Two of the groups met at Oxford, two at Cambridge, and two at Westminster. So ultimately what the brother's trying to convey is that we really have to understand what was the reason and the need for alternate version, as you put it so eloquently, of the Bible. Can I, can I no. Wait, wait. So, so as we read that, this is going to back up our statement about how we read, how we brung the book to clarify the Bible. Even he ran, read an outside source. Now he's going to pull a scripture to show you inside the Bible that prophecy. Now I have a scripture that I want to pull, and that's the Book of Psalms, sixty-eight and verse eleven. Um, as he he pulled the text to show. Yeah, I how it was produced. So this is what the scriptures say. This is Psalms 68 verse 11. Okay. The Lord gave the word. Right. Great was the company of those that published it. Great was the company of those that published it. So the Most High gives the word from the time of Moses all up into all the different prophets. What happened? Holy men of the Most High, they put it on a text. So it wasn't like something that a man just woke up one day and just, you know, current, you know, just came up with this in his mind. Great was the, um, what was it again? The Lord gave the word. The Most High gives the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Great was the company of those that published the 47 Hebrew and Greek scholars. Right. And so forth. There's a, uh, there's a young man on trial right now for um, organizing uh, the rape of a young lady. Um, it's one of these Ivy League schools. I forget which one, but it's, it's all over the e-ways, all over the airways right now. And they sentenced him, though he did not penetrate her, though he did not touch her, though he did not lay hands on her. They sentenced him 25 years alongside with those who actually violated her. And so the question became, how did he get that sentence if he, in fact, did not participate in the act of violating her in the physical sense uh, in a way that they defined as rape? And they said because he authorized it. He created that scenario. Or was it a uh, translation? Huh? Or a translation of what he was supposed to have done. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, so that's, that, was, that was one point. The, the thing, though, that I really, um, and this is just how spiritual things go, the thing uh, that I was really looking at is that all these brothers in the room together promoting uh, the word of God, which is uh, unifying and, and, and it's coagulative. It brings us together, you know. And when we said in the beginning of the broadcast, because it's almost like we're looking for uh, what's not right, we're prepared to defend as opposed to just uh, receive. And scripture, to me, all of it is very different, and it all has its own unique capacity to be transformative on its own, right? Uh, my brother uh, Osias said that uh, in the beginning when we were talking about the caller in, about language, he said, well, it's not going to be a debate. You know, not yet, but it's going to be one. And so that's anticipating that particular tension. Whereas in a collective study, you know what I mean? I'm learning here. I think Marcus is the one yeah, who said that. Yeah, that was me. That was me that, that said that. You, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> but I'm, I'm learning here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm learning some things that I hadn't known before. <laughs> Let me get a, I want to take this information to other people. You see what I'm saying? Let me yeah. get a couple of shout outs. Our sister Abigail's checking in. She says, Shalom, brothers. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brother Barack Shalom. Shaw is checking in. Uh, Shalom. Peace, brother. Shalom, Elder. Uh, Shalom, Elder. Dante, all praises. Brother's doing that work. Uh, our sister Melanie in the shot, she says that she loves to see brothers in roundtable type discussions. She says this is a beautiful sight to see. Uh, our brother W. Balls from Twilight After Dark is checking in. He's letting us know uh, that, he's letting, uh, that he's checking in. And I think we've got everybody in social media represented. So, um, I don't even remember. Hey, Marcus, he made it. Well, let me let me, let me, let me let me make another. Let me let me comment on something he said too. Absolutely. Because when you bring up the justice system, this is the reason why we're so um, gun ho, if you will, because we know that this system is not made for our people. I'm talking about square across the board from the laws that have been implemented all the way down. So what we're showing and trying to shine a light to our people is that. We have to come out of the ways of America, period. Definitely. Mainly, primarily the so-called white man. We got to come out of his ways because at the end of the day, what has happened to our people, we're being destroyed systematically, everything, pragmatically, whatever, however you want to say it, we're being destroyed as a people. And the reason why we're being destroyed is because we have not returned back to our power. We haven't returned back to our heritage. 
I want to kind of move from that, and I'm sure at some point it'll come back. Yeah. Uh, but I want to move to the next topic. What is your nationality? What is your nationality? Before I before I do that, that's the next on the uh, floor of the agenda. But before I do that, I want to introduce one of our sisters who has joined the discussion. Uh, our sister Ashley is in the room. What's going on, sis? What's going on? How y'all doing? We're doing well. Thank All you right. for being here. Right. What's your Good comment? To see y'all again. What you want to get in on? <laughs> I just, I, really, we did. We came with the dresses. <laughs> we really did. I, I'm not even going to lie. I dug through the closet. I dug through the closet. I said, I'm going to wear the long dress today. Why don't you? Why, why don't you? No pants, right? um, No pants. Well, for the, I can't, I can't on, promise on, you that this isn't full fibers for, for, or whatever for those y'all folks saying, who, but, uh, you know, we working for, one step at a time. For those folks who have no idea what you're talking right. about, why don't you share with the new listeners why that's so funny to all of us right now? You know, <laughs> <laughs> because when we first, I guess this is my third time being here with you gentlemen, and, you know, they were like, oh, women don't, shouldn't be wearing pants. And, you know, we was in here with the, we were abominations. <laughs> we were up in here with the pants. I mean, my, I'm sure mine was as tight as all get out, you know. <laughs> and um, th- and then it don't come with the faux fibers and things. So I don't know about the faux fibers. I'm sure this is lycra, but I'm doing the best I can. I did come here <laughs> with the, um, I found, and it's not form fit. It's maxi dress black to the floor. Uh, uh, okay. I did the best I could, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah. I raised my hand with the question of what this gentleman just said here about where black people aren't really where we need to be, and that's the whole point of this. So I was just wondering what is the, the promised land? What is the goal? So... When will what exactly would it is. look like with black people being where they need to be? What does that look like to to you all? It's a good question because the uh, reason why I think it's a good question is because uh, one of the I guess you know we'll introduce two things at once, Ozai and brothers, because when I mentioned Ashley that the next topic would be what is your nationality the next one after that is has your way been tried before and the way I connect those two is she's asking you know where are we versus where we should be you know so I think those two things kind of go together and so since since we brought it out let's let's talk about it well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm just want to I just want to commend her first of all. <laughs> I mean, she she took a ver- we verbally ass- she got verbally assassinated and it was high emotions the last time. So she came in, you know, and she has on the long dress, the, long, the oh, modest and it's apparel. The same blue is this the same blue? Look, look, look. Like modest apparel, right? I'm like, I'm trying, y'all. And she matching the camp color. So yeah. the thing is, it's um, all it's all love. Man. <laughs> it's all good. it's all good. Man. The thing is, um, what. I think what people get uh, are misinterpreted about the movement. How would it look if we are all like as we supposed to be? You talking about the kingdom then? You talking about us in righteous harmony? You talking about a brother being able to drop his wallet and somebody actually deliver it back with the contents in it? You talking about? I've actually had that. (laughs) I mean, I mean, I've had I've had it happen too, but it's rare occasion. I mean, I would say, Marcus. Drop your wallet now and see if you want to try your luck. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Probably, probably so the, not. But my point is you're talking about peace and harmony right. um, within our community. No one, you know, shooting each other down. I mean, just I mentioned Shaul was out. We were out uh, yesterday. We were building, just talking. And I'm out in front of the school, the new school. And we're sitting down, you know, just talking. And all of a sudden, a group of kids, four young men, it, one young man is approaching another young man with a two by four with two in, uh, with, a, with an inch and a half nails in it. And I'm looking. We're all looking. We look at each other. We stop and say, wait a minute. What is this? Are they playing? Or are they joking? And he took a swing and he hit first. He hit him in the stomach and he took a swing to try to take his head off. So we immediately ran over there and we we stopped it. Right. But it but knowing our codes of conduct, knowing what. Knowing what we know in the, in the scriptures, we're going to handle that situation biblically, how the Bible says to handle it. We know that anger, right, is outrageous mm-hmm. according to the scriptures. Mm-hmm. So what we did was we said, here, young man, take that young man home. Y'all two young men, here's a couple dollars. Y'all walk two and a half, three blocks up to the store, grab all y'all some drinks, 
and let him cool down. In the opposite direction. In the opposite direction. We getting uh, uh, so that was that was something that was used for his wisdom. Rev, I'm glad you brought that up. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm glad you brought that up when you were talking about uh, you know, social justice. When you're talking about uh, where we are as a people concerning you know just our spiritual and physical uh, demographic. And I work in social justice, been doing so for about the last 14, 15 years. And in that, I've, I've found a parallel between uh, the spirit and the system. Because you're right, mass incarceration has reduced brothers in particular from characters to commodities. Absolutely. Why would I pay you 10 or $15 an hour when I can pay you $2 a month and have you still working for Boeing, right, right. still working for, they have brothers making thongs in the penitentiary, right? right? right. They have brothers, AT&T operators in the penitentiary, $2 a day. And then you get out as a felon, cannot come back home to your woman and your children because you can't come into Section 8, they had to relocate because you got locked up on Trump charges. This I understand quite well. And so what we realize now in this moment of harmony is that we're trying to be a social prophylactic so that we don't have the same spiritually transmitted diseases that have kept us feeding the machine and, and, and rendering ourselves as bait. Okay, so there is an investment in us being locked up. And the... Uh, <laughs> And I'm about to be quiet about it. But here's a letter from Willie Lynch. And Willie Lynch was a guy who gave, and he was a, a, a slave architect, if you would. And here's a direct quote for him. It says, I have full proof, a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you, if instilled correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. I have outlined a number of differences among them, and I take these differences and make them bigger. I use fear, distrust, and envy for control purposes. In other words, as long as we are disenfranchised and divided, we are to some degree feeding the machine because we're not operating at our full collective capacity. I got a fabulous question from a listener, but I'm going to have you guys address the brother first, but you're going to want to hear this question. Go ahead. All right. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in 100 percent agreement with him. The solution to that problem is us to return back to our heritage. Amen. If we return back to the laws, statutes and commandments, we have our own government in place. We have our own system in place. It, it doesn't matter where you at. If you return back to righteous principles, I'm not going to steal from you, brother. Right. And if you down and out, I'm going to help you. Okay. Now, you have some of that. You have some of that going on. But what makes the next man righteous? You need something written down. You need something that's concrete. Just because you have some type of scruples or morals in you don't mean the next man do, but he needs something written. There's a term in Africa called <laughs> Ubuntu, and I believe it's Ghanaian or either out of Nigeria, and it means I am because you are. You are because I am, right? And so uh, they also say together the ants ate the elephants. So I agree with you. You know, we work together. But let me, before you ask, before I know we're going to answer that question, but here's the answer to it. You know, we get everything out of the Bible. Let's go to the book of Beckett. What verse? What verse? Chapter 1, read verse 2. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 1 and verse 2. Uh -huh. O Lord, how long shall I cry? Uh -huh. Thou will not hear. Even cry out unto thee of violence, uh -huh. and thou will not save. And thou will not save. This is, this is a cry going out, yeah. because we're getting beat down. You got to ask yourself a question, brother. Where's your God? Read. Why doest thou show me iniquity? Why you show iniquity? Sin. Read on. And cause me to behold grievance. Don't we behold grievance? Yeah. Haven't, we been, haven't we been looking at grievance? Our brothers getting killed in the streets. Sisters getting killed while they're locked up. You're not exempt. Read. For spoiling and violence are before me. Spoiling and violence is before us, man. This is what we saw yesterday. Read on. And there are that raise up strife and contention. And our people is very strife and contention. You got a, just another story. A brother was killed on uh, Facebook Live. We doing Facebook Live right now. A brother was killed on that thing. Read on. Verse 4. Therefore, the law is slack. The reason why you, in results of this, the reason why you have this type of stuff going on is because our laws is slack within our community. No one has righteous principles. See, when we start getting back to fundamentals, it's about the laws. Can, can I ask you something, brother? Well, let me finish this. Watch this. Read on. And judgment doth never go forth. Righteous judgments never go forth. Read on. For the wicked doth can pass about the righteous. So the wicked can pass about the righteous. Someone trying to live by the commandments. Read on. Therefore, as a result, wrong judgment proceedeth. Amen. 
We got a caller on the live line. Uh, caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? What you want to get in on? All praises, man. My name is um, Dante. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Just had a, uh, a question for the brothers uh, wondering if they could get into it according to the scriptures because the brother the brother just said uh, something about um, Afri Africa. So I was wondering whether or not um, the so-called African-Americans are are uh, African according to the Bible or whether we something else. That's a fabulous question, <laughs> <laughs> Dante, and I saw you in the Facebook Live, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you for calling in. The phone lines are hopping right now. Shalom, Dante. Caller, we yes, see sir. you calling All in. Praises. Dante, All keep the line. Are. Keep Shalom the to, the, uh, to the leadership of FWI, FWI too. Yes, Shalom. Anybody want to address the brother's yes, question? Exodus 11, verse 7. Exodus 11, verse 7. So the question is, are the so-called blacks or the African American, are they bloodline African? That's the question. Which which he keeps said, in line, Dante, with the question, Osias, correct me if I'm wrong, what is your nationality? Right. So it's basically he just phrased that question in a different way. Okay. And he asked according to the right. Bible. So Exodus eleven verse seven. Okay, Dante, here it comes. Exodus All chapter right. eleven and verse seven. But against any of the children of Israel, which is a, a nation of people, the children of Israel, come on, shall not a dog move his tongue uh -huh. against man or beast, uh -huh. that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference. He does what? He put a difference between between the Egyptian and who and Israel. So the Most High say he puts a difference between the Africans, because the Egyptians are Africans, and the children of Israel. Both are dark nations, melanated, some people call, but they are two different nations according to the Most High. So no, as you read in the Bible, the curses that fell upon the Israelites only fell upon a certain race of people over here in the Americas, and that's you so-called blacks and Hispanics of Negro and Indian descent. You are the nation of Israel, Israel, and you ran into Africa in 70 AD according to the Bible and the history books running from Roman persecution. That's how you got to Africa, to blend in with another dark race because you was running from the Romans in 70 AD. That can be proven with history. All praises. That's definitely answering my question. Thank you. Brother Dante, thank you so much for listening. Keep on. Uh, stay with us. We appreciate you you're listening to us tonight, brother. Can I offer something? Yes, sir, I'm definitely. Can I offer something? Sorry about that, Dante. I'm sorry. I dropped you just a little sooner than I meant to. My apologies. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Ref? Uh, I was just thinking, uh, depending on how you look at it, you know, um, uh, all life, all human life comes from Africa because we are the original man and woman. Right. So before Willie Lynch, like I just said, started right. talking about these divisions. Right. Before that happened, we were all. Africans. We've mutated and migrated over the years based on our geographical grid and locations. If you're walking through sand, your eyes might, over time, get slanted. Uh, uh, Aryan people, uh, for example, white folk, Europeans, those were people who had a mutant gene and they went over and migrated in the Caucasus Mountains, and that's why they're called Caucasians, right? People from Africa are called Africans. And so when you look at the transatlantic slave trade, where they took our people from Africa, and dropped us off in Liverpool, England, and ended up in Mississippi on a plantation somewhere. Right. When you look at all of that, are we, are we Africans or Americans? We're African Americans, but, but more so importantly, we all human. And I think that's what your word is addressing, is our humanity, not necessarily the set that we roll with, right? Yeah, not you, at all. you speak of the science. No. You speak, no. you speak of the history of, yeah. uh, uh, of Yacoub, and, and a lot of us know that doctrine uh, about the, the Caucasian and the Caucasus Mountains. A lot of folks don't, but we definitely could do a whole show. <laughs> no, these brothers are heavy, and I'm trying to learn. We could do a whole show. On, we could do a whole show on that, brother. You, 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 you had something you want to drop yes, on? Yes, sir. I just want to add on uh, to answer the brother's question uh, that called in as well as expound on what's being brought out here. Okay, go for it. As far as differentiating between the Israelites and the so-called Africans, the descendants of Ham, okay, and this, again, this is based on the scholars. This is from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Okay? And this is under the definition for Ham. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. 
He became the progenitor of the dark races. He became the father, the progenitor of the dark races. Not the Negroes, Uh but the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Libyans, and the Canaanites. So but not people, the Negroes. Right. So our people got to th- start asking the question. What they know that you don't know? Why they say not the Negroes? They, call, they say ham, but not the Negroes. When did we start using Negro? In the 50s. Right. And so we're making a biblical reference to ham, drawing a parallel off of a term that we well, created in the 50s. And, one, and that's what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. You know, help no, me out. Yeah, we can understand. Negro, Negro, I thought Negro just, just came, uh, well, just became well, a part well, of well, vocabulary well, okay. in the 60s when well, we were trying to re-identify ourselves post-Marcus Garvey, that, right way, saying right we're not Pan-African, but we are we, we're Negroes, not, we're not the Acts N-word. 13. Acts 13. Right. Well, let's because go a little deeper than Negro. Let's I'm go to the word. Trying to understand something. Because, because, word of it. because, right. because, here, right. because here's, here's the biblical text. The book of Acts, mm-hmm. chapter 13, verse 1. Mm-hmm. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch uh-huh. certain prophets, teachers as Barnabas, uh-huh. and Simeon. Simeon is Peter. That was called nigger. They were called what? That was called nigger. The Bible said they were called what? Nigger been being used. That's biblical reference in Bible days. We were called nigger. You look it up, Latin word means black. Yep. What verse is this? Acts 13, 13 verse 1. 1. That's right. As a matter of fact, just to, just to clear some up too, Paul was mistaken as an Egyptian. Right. Mm-hmm. Just, to, just, to, just to clear it up, just to let you know the apostles, they were dark-skinned men, so Paul was mistaken as an Egyptian, which were another dark nation. And here's something about language, because we look at, and like you just said, brother, and I'm glad you brought that out, because uh, that's just how God works, or the most high works. Um, we talk about black and white. White is the absence of anything. Black is a combination of all things. So in that context, to call someone nigger, you're also affirming the 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 multi-shaded, multi-sized, you're, you're, you're affirming everybody there because they all, in concert, created that color black. It was everything. White is the absence of anything. Right, right. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. We're getting ready to take our first break of the night, and I see everybody is kind of queuing up the Bibles and getting yeah, everything yeah, yeah, ready. I want to address that last statement. Yeah, I, I want to address that last I, statement. Yeah, I, I know you do. I know, I know you do. All right, I tell you what. I tell you what, folks. We're going to, uh, Ozias, address that last statement. We're going to take a break because of, you know, for certain time constraints, I want to make sure that we kind of keep everything in order. So address that last statement. Ozias will get the last word other than myself okay, on this no segment. Problem. And then we will go ahead and take a break because we got a question from our listeners, from one of our listeners, uh, that I want to lead the next segment off with. I think it's a very good question, and I think that you guys would have uh, an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting response to it. So, as I take the last word, brother. Yeah, I wanted to just address that because see, when we just read the word "nigger" in the Bible, but you, but you have to realize something. You have to realize something. That word, that's a Latin word. It's a Latin word. What was the three languages, what was the three primary languages spoken um, during the time of Christ? I believe it was Latin and Hebrew. Uh, and, and Greek. And Greek. Greek. Yeah. So we have Latin. What's the, what is, where does English come from? It comes from Latin. There you go. It's a derivative. Of, yeah, it is. It's a derivative it's a of Latin. But you know what? There's so many different, as you were stating, there's so many different ways you can put wording. Greek is so problem. difficult to sit there and subjugate in our language, that the word might not be the same, as, and I might not be the same as what you believe it's stating. On my on my fault, we got the history book. It's called Africa's Gift to America, where the guy breaks down that word. He tells you some pronounce it Negro, Niger, mm-hmm. Niger, Negro. He said, but then it was pronounced nigger. Mm-hmm. That's a historical reference. Just right. didn't bring a book. Ain't, we can bring it next time. Anytime. Ain't no half step on Marcus. Yeah, I know it's getting hot. Everybody wants to get in. We need to reset. So we're going to take our first break of the night. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to get the ladies to jump in. They'll kind of get the beginning word. We're going to ask a question from social media. Those folks that are checking us out right now on Facebook Live, I'm about to shut this down, but I promise I will reset it. Just stay tuned. Stay closed five minutes. That's how long the break is going to be. Marcus, Jay, and the crew, 
of the future world of Israel. Ain't no half-stepping with yours truly. Be back in a few minutes.